Hi everyone, this is Michael. In this video I want to talk about pointers in C. Specifically, I want to give a conceptual understanding about what pointers actually are and how you can use them. In addition, you are going to see the three different representations a pointer can assume in your C program. So have fun! So at first I'm going to start with an empty file. And every good C program has to start with a main function. So first of all, we're going to create a plain and simple integer variable. Let's call it x and initialize it with 5. So now I'm just going to print out the value of the variable to the console. In order to do that, I have to include the header stdio.h. So let's see, on the right side I'm going to compile the program simply by calling gcc on the pointer demo. I'm specifying the output file name to be pointer demo. So from now on we can just execute the program by using dot slash pointer demo. So after pressing enter the program is compiled and executed right away. We see that our printf function is working fine. It just prints the value of x. So now let's take a look at pointers themselves. So in case you heard anything about pointers before, you certainly also heard about memory addresses. What I'm meaning by that is that pointer are used to point to memory locations. And what I mean by memory is the RAM of your computer. So, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to print out to the terminal the memory address of the variable we just declared. And this is done by using a certain operator. The operator we need to get the address of x is the ampersand. So let's run the program and what we are already seeing is a warning. This doesn't mean our program didn't compile, in fact it did compile, but there was an issue that the compiler recognized. And the issue is pretty simple. We do want to print the address of the variable x, but we want to format it to a decimal number. This has been specified by us using the, um, using the percentage and D format specifier. Percentage D specifies that we want to print out a decimal number. But the warning is actually telling us that we are not dealing with an integer. It says that we are dealing with a different type. So let's take a closer look at this issue. So in the beginning we declared a variable called x. After assigning the value 5 to x, x now represents the location where we can find the value 5. In our C program, we are now using x in order to refer to 5. But to get back to the ampersand, by using the ampersand x, we are referring to the location where the value 5 is stored. And this is all that a pointer is. A pointer points to a location. So if you're asking yourself, is ampersand x actually a pointer, then the answer is yes. The C program is interpreting this statement as a pointer itself. So going back to the terminal, the compiler is saying, dude, you want me to insert an integer value at the position percent %d, but you provided a pointer. So this basically doesn't match up. So before I will get into specifying a pointer, I will fix this warning. For this, I'm going to change the format specifier from %d to %p. %p is telling the compiler that the value that is being put in is a pointer. Later we will see what is going to be printed to the console. So next up, we are going to specify our pointer. The pointer will be pointing to the location of x. 
Remembering the small intermission of the video, we saw that ampersand x is actually referring to the location of x. So therefore, the specification of a pointer is int asterisk pointer name equals the location of x. So let's test what happens if we print out a pointer. In order to print out the value of a pointer, as I did before, I have to use the format specifier p. So let's go ahead and run it. So what we can see on the terminal is that both print statements have the same value. This is because printing ampersand x and printing the value of the pointer, which is assigned to ampersand x, is the same. So by printing the address of x and printing the pointer value, we are accessing the same information. You can actually use three different representations of one and the same pointer, which I'm going to show you now. The first one we already used, which is simply the value of the pointer. So resizing these windows real quick. The second representation is called dereferencing the pointer and accesses the value stored on the location where the pointer is pointing to. In our case, this is obviously 5. So dereferencing the pointer dereferences the address that the pointer is pointing to, aka the address of x, on which the value 5 is stored. Since we know the type of 5, we are specifying percentage %d again. So the act of dereferencing is done by writing asterisk pointer name. The third and last representation is actually the address of the pointer itself. So in order to access the address of a pointer, it's exactly the same as we did with the variable x, it's ampersand pointer name. When we execute the program, we see that I did a tiny mistake here. I specified percent %x, which is a format specifier that takes a value and formats it into a hex value. Again, since I provided a pointer, I get a compiler warning, but the address that is printed on the terminal is actually the address of the pointer. So after replacing x with p again and executing the program, the compiler is satisfied. So the main thing I wanted to show you with this video is that when we use a pointer in our program, we can actually use three different representations of the same variable within our program. The list shows all three representations. First, we can use the pointer to represent a memory location by referring to its value. Secondly, we can use the pointer to represent the value of the location it is pointing to. We do this by dereferencing the pointer using the asterisk. And third, we can use the pointer variable to represent the pointer's address. In order to do so, we have to use the ampersand sign. The big takeaway here, from my point of view, is that we are using a simple variable, but by specifying different prefixes, we are interpreting this variable in different ways. Of course, we can use no prefix, but using no prefix actually has a specific meaning. By using the other prefixes I just showed you, we are interpreting the variable differently and the statement we wrote down represents now different things. I found this a very interesting way of looking at what a variable actually is and hopefully this video could clarify a few questions you had about pointers. So see you in the next one.